Welcome to DozoChem. This video covers electron configurations of atoms and ions involving d orbitals. Remember that the maximum number of electrons per orbital is 2. So in s orbital, you can fit up to 2 electrons. p orbitals come in sets of 3. Each fits 2 electrons, so you can fit up to 6 electrons in a set of p orbitals. And d orbitals come in a set of five, each fits two electrons, so you can fit up to ten electrons for a set of d orbitals. Up top here I've written the order you would fill the orbitals when you're doing an electron configuration involving d orbitals. Um, this goes from 1s up to 6s. Um, it goes beyond that for larger atoms, but uh, we'll stop at 6s for now. Um, and the superscripts tell you the maximum number of electrons you could fit. You might end up less than that um, depending on how many electrons you have total in the atom. Uh, also remember the valence electrons are the ones with the highest n value or highest principal quantum number. Those are the numbers in front of the letters, so we'll touch on that a little bit in the examples below. So the element CS55 electrons, we just fill in the order above until we get to 55. If I wrote out most of it and I stopped there, that'd be 54. So I have one more to go. Um, success comes next, but instead of doing a 2, since I only have one more electron, I just make the subscript a 1, and that gets me to 55. Valence electrons, the 6 in front here is the highest principal quantum number, and there's one electron in that orbital, so CS has one valence electron. Iodine, 53 electrons, so I fill in the order. If I stop there, that would be 48. So I've got 5 more to go. The next thing in the order is 5P. And I have five more, so I make that a five, even though it could fit six. I only had five more electrons, so I make it a five. Um, valence electrons, we look at the principal quantum number. There's a five there, and there's another five here. So don't forget about the 5s orbital also has some valence electrons. So if we add all that up, we get seven valence electrons. reminder about the shorthand noble gas electron configuration which may save you some time. You can go up one from your element and all the way to the right to column 18 and write down that noble gas in brackets. Um, then you would start writing ns where n is the row number of your element. Um, that would be the next orbital you would get to. So CS we did on the previous slide 55 electrons and it's in row 6. So I go up to row 5 and all the way to the right, and I write XE in brackets. That's going to take care of 54 electrons. So I only have one more to go, and so NS comes next where N is the row number. And CS is in the sixth row, so we're going to start with 6S and put our final electron there. For iodine, 53 electrons, row 5. So I go up to row 4 all the way to the right, and I write down KR in brackets. It's the noble gas in the previous row. That'll get me 36 electrons, and I need 17 more. So since I is in the fifth row, I start with 5s, and I go from there until I have 17 electrons. So up to the 4d, if that's filled, that's 12, and I have five more to go. So I put them in the 5p. Now let's talk about ions. Anions have a negative charge, so you're going to write down the neutral atoms configuration and simply add electrons. For every um, negative charge you have, you have to add an electron. So iodine shorthand is here. So if I want to do I1 minus, I just take iodine neutral and change the ending from a 5 to a 6 to represent the extra electron added. Um, electrons inside the noble gas core or inside the brackets and D electrons are non-valence, whereas all S and P outside the brackets are valence. So if we're doing cations with a positive charge, you're still going to start with the neutral atom, but now we're going to remove electrons because it's positively charged. Now the order you're going to run remove them in is first remove the valence P, then you would remove the valence S, and at that point if you still need to remove electrons, then you can start removing the valence D outside the bracket. So those Ds outside the bracket are actually non-valence. Um, so those would be the third ones you removed after the valence P and the valence S. So let's look at uh, the element GE. Here's the neutral GE atom. 
If I want to make it 2 plus, I need to remove two electrons. So up above here, we've said the first thing that you remove is valence P. So I would get rid of these two. Um, so here's GE2 plus. Then if I want to make it 4 plus, I need to remove two more electrons. Now a common mistake is to just start removing the 3D here, but you don't want to do that. You want to remove the valence S next. Um, up here it says to remove the valence S next. So get rid of these first, the 4S rather than the 3D. Um, so now I have argon 3D10. If I want to make the GE5 plus, I got one more electron to go at that point, then you would remove D outside the bracket. So instead of a 10, you could make it a 9. Okay, so let's uh, end quickly with a couple more examples, uh, one anion and one involving cations. Um, so we're going to do the shorthand and complete electron configurations. We're going to determine the number of valence electrons. And then we're going to write the shorthand configuration for either positive or negative ions. So um, let's uh, look at Te, 52 electrons. So I wrote the configuration of neutral Te here. Um, if you need to stop the video and verify that, feel free. Um, but once we have that, if I want to do the shorthand, I can just go up from Te one row and all the way to the right, and write Kr as my noble gas. Since Te is in the fifth row, I'm going to start with 5s and go from there. Uh, Kr has 36 electrons, so I need 16 more, so I just keep filling in the order, and I'll end in 5p4, and that'll give me my extra 16 electrons. Now in terms of valence electrons, principal quantum number of 5 here and here, so I'm going to add those together to get my total valence, which would be 6 valence electrons. Then if I'm doing Te2-, minus, I've got to add 2 electrons to the neutral configuration up above. So I simply take what I wrote for Te and change the 4 to a 6 at the very end to recognize the extra 2 electrons. Um, down below, we've got IN neutral, and then we want to know what would IN plus, 3 plus, and 5 plus be. So um, I wrote the long configuration for IN, 49 electrons. Then it's also in the fifth row, so we're going to go up one and to the right. So KR is the noble gas for this one as well. And we're in the fifth row, so we start with 5S. Um, if you have 36 in KR, you're going to need 13 more. So if we start at 5S and add 13, we end up with 5p1 at the end. Uh, valence electrons, there's a 5 there and a 5 there, so we're going to add all the electrons in those two orbitals together, and we get 3 valence electrons. Now, if I want to do phi or IN+, plus, I have to take the neutral configuration and remove one, so you'll remember from the previous slide, you're going to remove the valence p first, so you're going to get rid of these 5p or that 5p electron. Um, so IN plus has this configuration. Um, if I want IN3 plus, I need to remove two more electrons, uh, but do not move them, remove them from the 4D because um, we know we're supposed to remove the 5S, which are valence S orbital or uh, electrons first. So let's get rid of those two. So IN3 plus is KR4D10. Now, if I want to make IN5 plus, now I can remove two more from the Ds, but um, you don't want to remove the Ds until you've removed the valence P first and then the valence S. So at the very end, we can go from 10 Ds to 8 Ds to get rid of those last two electrons. So that's it for this video. Good luck.